As long as an individual party gets more than 50% of the votes and controls majority of the parliament, they can run, run the government basically as they please. They will control the head of government, they will control what ideas do and do not get through in terms of law, and they will decide how the government will run up until the next election. This has happened two elections ago in the United Kingdom, and it happens relatively regularly in Japan. A lot of the time, though, these systems end up with a smorgasbord of smaller parties, with the largest party getting 30%, and then 17%, and 10%, and some mixture of smaller numbers. The important thing to note here is, often you end up with two very large parties who then have to form larger governments in coalition with smaller parties. A coalition is simply a group of parties who have gotten together and made an organizational decision between themselves to vote as a block to form a government. This means that, say, a party with 45% of the vote and a party with 10% of the vote get together in a back room somewhere and decide how they're going to run the government together, to, and then as a unit, they control 55% of the vote and can work as if they were one party to elect the head of government and pass laws and do all of the other things that a government is going to do. This doesn't mean that they'll be in lockstep with one another, and it often involves a lot of conversations between those people. For instance, cabinet ministries are often really important in the formation of these coalitions. The largest party will probably get to be the prime minister or the head of government, whatever their title is, but the various ministries underneath of them will have to be hashed out individually. You might hand out the head of the Environmental Protection Agency to this person and the head of the Intelligence Agency or the, de the Defense Department, these different people to different parties in order to sate them in their need for power and need for voice in government. And in return, they will vote with you and allow you to form a stable government. Coalitions are usually formed with obvious partners. You'll have a center-right, pro-business, moderate, socially democratic party, which gains some large number of the votes, and then brings on a number of small, conservative local parties, or a far-right party uh, to bump out their coalition to the necessary 50%. You see the same on the left, where a moderate social democrat, slightly left-leaning party, ends up partnering with the Greens or the Socialists in order to form a stable government. The problem with coalitions, as seen by the parties inside of that coalition, is that they're fragile. Uh, an individual party has a lot of power and a lot of ability to whip their own members into rank and file to get them to vote the way that they want them to. But at any moment, between those parties, fissions in between the parties could fall apart. If that were to happen, that coalition would dissolve. And a dissolved coalition is subject to a vote of no confidence. A vote of no confidence is when the entire legislature comes together to decide whether or not to kick out the current head of government. If the coalition is strong, or if the majority is held by a single party, a vote of no confidence is only happening happening in the most rare of circumstances, someone going truly off the rails, politically speaking. But if you have a coalition, and you make a member of your coalition angry enough, they can call for a vote of no confidence and vote against you. And if you can't quickly enough come, come together and wrangle those votes out of some other party, some other people that you haven't angered more than this person who is in your coalition, your government will fail. And there will have to be a period wherein this new government comes together and forms a new, go a new way to govern the country, or a new election must be held. An interesting thing about coalition governments is the idea of kingmakers. Kingmakers are small parties who have just enough seats to push any either or one of the parties, the large parties, over the limit, up to 50%. This can sometimes happen if you have two very large parties, but a number, a, small, a large enough number of small parties in government to keep those large parties from hitting 50% all on their own. If they do that, you can have any, either of these two large parties coming to any number of small parties offering to make them kingmakers. For instance, here in Australia, we recently had the Green Party as kingmakers. This means that the Liberal Party, who were the conservative parties in government, I know that's confusing, I'm sorry, but the Liberal Party 
had to go through the Greens. They had just enough power to push that coalition of two parties over the 50% line and not have to have them come together with any large number of small parties with one, two, or three members of parliament. I hope that this has been interesting and informative and relatively clear. If you have any questions, you can feel free to pass those along to Frau Clemens. And if Frau Clemens can't answer them, I'm sure she will email me. And, you know, 14 to 24 hours later here in the rainforest, maybe I can put together an answer for you. I hope that this is really interesting and that you've become interested in both comparative electoral systems, comparative politics, and the power plays of Germany. It's really interesting and it's a really important thing to understand if you're going to understand European politics as a whole. Germany is a power player, both politically and in foreign power, in military power, and economically most of all. Thank you so much for listening and uh, have a lovely day.